Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2005 Ford Freestyle with a 3.0 lira. The complaint on this car is that the radio does not work, the interior lights do not work, and the windows are stuck shut. So basically, the windows are stuck in a rolled up position. The driver cannot roll the windows up and down. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, we will then talk about what we can do to fix this. So I'm going to turn the key on because the key has to be on to turn this radio on. So I got the ignition in the on position. So once I press this knob or this button, if everything is fine, this radio should come on. So I'm going to press it, and as you can see, the radio does not come on. So this one is confirmed. As you can see, the radio doesn't come on. So now let's test the interior light. So this light over here, if everything was fine, once I press this button, this light, these two lights should have come on. And as you can see, nothing happens when I press the button. So the interior lights do not work. So now let's test the window. So the window is closed right now. I hope you can see that. The window is stuck shut. Now I'm gonna roll the window up and down using this master switch. The key is still on. And as you can see, the window doesn't go up and down. And the lock button works. Watch. The lock works, but you cannot roll the windows up and down. So the windows are completely stuck shut, okay? So, customer's complaint confirmed. So now what are we gonna do to fix this? Well, usually when I have issues like this, I would pick one specific circuit first. I'm sure whatever that's causing the problem is one thing that's affecting all these other circuits. So we have an issue in, in three different circuits. The radio circuit, the interior lights circuit and the window uh, circuit, the power window circuit. So it's either a power supply issue or a ground supply issue. I'm sure there's probably a, a fuse or a ground that supplies either power or ground to these three circuits. And if it's down, then it's going to affect these other circuits. So I'm just going to pick one circuit and go after it. Once I fix that one circuit, I'm sure it's going to fix the other circuits. So if you have an issue like this where you have either radio and, and, and windows or, or lights on the dash or lights outside, exterior lights do not work, just pick one simple circuit, go after that, and usually 80% of the time, once you fix that one circuit, it also fix the other circuits because usually they are all tied together. All right? So I'm going to go after the radio. I'm going to try to fix the radio first. And then I'm sure once we find out whatever that's going on with the radio, it's also going to lead us to these other circuits. For any other thing, any other component to work, you need power and ground. For, so for the radio to work, it has to have power and ground. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to service information and pull up our power and grounds. Uh, distribution box. We're going to start with the power distribution box first. Let's go and pull up our power distribution wiring diagram to see uh, what feeds power to this radio. I'm sure it has either one or two fuses that feed power to this radio. We're going to find out which fuses they are. We will check them and then we'll go from there. So let's go to service information and pull up our power distribution wiring diagram. All right, so here is our power distribution wiring diagram. So now what I need to do is I have to find the radio on this power distribution wiring diagram. So we have to find a fuse that feeds power to the radio. So we're gonna start scrolling down. And again, I know there is a couple of circuits that are affected, but let's just pick the uh, radio circuit and fix that and I'm sure whatever that's affecting the radio circuit is also affecting the other circuits so right over here I hope you can see this says radio 
right here. So radio fuse 11, it's a 20 amp fuse. So fuse 11 apparently feeds power to the radio and also feeds power to the rear seat entertainment RSE module. Okay, these guys right over here. Okay, so fuse 11 feeds power to the radio and is rear seat entertainment RS module. So we have to check fuse 11 and where is fuse 11? Fuse 11 is on the smart junction box left side of the dashboard. So the the uh, fuse box that's inside the car, okay? So the fuse box under the steering wheel. Now, we know that there's one fuse that supplies power to the radio. Some radios may have two fuses. Let's keep scrolling down to see if there's another fuse that supplies power to the radio because there might be a constant power and a power that turns on when you turn the key on. Okay, so let's keep fuse 11 in the back of our minds. So we're gonna check fuse 11 and let's see if there's any other fuse on this diagram that we have to check or any other fuse that supplies power to the radio. So let's keep scrolling down. This is the ignition switch right here. Let's keep scrolling. So right here, there's another fuse right here that supplies power to the radio. So here radio, uh, fuse, fuse 13. Fuse 13, it is a 7.5 amp fuse. Okay, so fuse 11 and fuse 13 are the fuses that we're gonna check. Let's keep scrolling to see if there's any other fuse that supplies power to the radio. And right over here, again, we have another fuse, basically on the last page, fuse 15, it's a 10 amp fuse, it also supplies power to the radio. Okay, so we're gonna check three fuses. Fuse 11, Fuse 13, and Fuse 15. Okay, and it looks like this fuse gets power when this relay here gets energized. Accessory delay relay. Okay, and this is the smart, smart junction right here. Smart junction box. So the, the box under the steering wheel. Alright, so now that we know that there are three fuses that supplies power to the radio, we know it's fuse 11, fuse 13, and fuse 15. So now let's go back inside the car and check these fuses. We're going to use a test light connected to ground. We will turn the key on, and there should be power on both sides of these fuses. So now let's go back in the car and check these fuses. All right, so we are back here inside the car, and we are under the steering wheel right now. This here is the smart junction box, the uh, fuse box inside the car. So we're gonna remove this cover, and on the cover here, it should say, it should tell us the fuse numbers. So right over here, we should have numbers on here. So we're gonna check fuse 11, fuse 13, and fuse 15. So it looks like fuse 11 is right here and fuse 13 is right here, and fuse 15 is right there. So now we're gonna use the test light. The key is on. My test light is connected to battery ground. We're gonna test fuse 11 first. Fuse 11 should be the fuse right over here. That should be fuse 11 according to this cover. I mean, these are the numbers from the cover. I'm reading from the cover. So this here should be fuse 11. As you can see, there's power on one side of fuse 11 and there's power on the other side of fuse 11. So fuse 11 is good. So there's power on both sides of fuse 11. So now we're going to check fuse 13. And fuse 13 leaves. So I'm checking right here, guys. I don't know if you can see. So we just checked. We just checked this fuse right here, fuse 11. 
So now we're going to check fuse 13, which is this fuse right here. So on the second column of fuses, so the first fuse right here is fuse 13. So now let's check that. So the second column should be this guy right here. And fuse 13 is this. And it is a 7.5 amp fuse. And as you can see, there's no power on fuse 13. No power here. No power here. So, no power on fuse 13. What about fuse 15? So, fuse 15 is right above fuse 13. So, this is 13. So, 13, 14, and 15. This one here is 15. And 15 also should have power on both sides with the key on. So, as you can see, there's no power on one side of the fuse. And there's no power on the other side of the fuse. Okay? So, so fuse 13 and fuse 15 do not have power on either side. You know, but fuse 11 has power. Fuse 11 is this fuse right over here. There's power on fuse 11, but no power on fuse 15 and fuse 13. All right, so now let's go back to the power distribution wiring diagram and see where these fuses get their power from. We have to figure out if they get power from the underhood fuse box or if there's a relay somewhere that supplies power to these two fuses. Now that's what we have to figure out. Let's go back to the power distribution box. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to the power distribution wiring diagram and see where these fuses get the power from. So let's go to the wiring diagram. All right, so we are back at the power distribution wiring diagram. So here is fuse 13. This is the fuse that doesn't have power on either side. And as you can see, it's one of the fuses that supplies power to the radio, okay? And remember, we are focusing on the radio circuit first. Now we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to scroll up and see where this wire goes and the, as you can see the wire goes to the ignition switch so it looks like this fuse is powered when the switch is on the start position okay so this fuse will only have power with the engine running okay so fuse 13 but what about fuse 15 remember we were checking three fuses fuse 11 fuse 13 and fuse 15 11 has power on both sides, but 13 and 15 do not have power. So we know that 13 has to, I mean, with fuse 13, the power, I mean, the vehicle has to be on for this fuse to have power on both sides. So that's good to know. And now let's check fuse 15. And I'm sure fuse 15 was on the last page. So right here is fuse 15 okay and fuse 15 gets power from this accessory delay relay right here fuse 15 and I believe fuse 15 should have power with the key on let's follow this wire so there is a fuse fuse 25 it is a 30 amp fuse and this is this is the uh, I mean, these dotted lines you see here, this is a partial view of this smart junction box. The fuse box behind, I mean, under the steering wheel. So this here, where does this fuse get its power from? So let's find a D on this wiring diagram. So here is D. Okay, so D, it looks like D gets power from, from fuse... 29 okay fuse 29 and fuse 29 is fuse 29 is the battery junction box so the battery junction box is under the hood so basically since we also don't have power at fuse 15 now I wonder if this fuse here is good because if we have power at fuse 29 which is a 80 amp fuse 
So power is gonna flow, we're gonna have 12 volt, well, we are gonna have battery voltage here on this fuse, it's gonna come down this leg of the circuit, and then it gets here, it's gonna split, it's gonna feed power to fuse 7, and fuse 10, and also to D, and D is gonna, there's a little splice here, it's gonna go to D, and D is gonna come all the way down to the last page over here okay this is D and D also feeds power to this 30 amp fuse in the junction box in the smart junction box under the steering wheel so basically let's go let's start with the under the hood fuse box first let's go under the hood and check fuse 29 and then we'll go from there if this fuse if this fuse here is good if this fuse is good then we're gonna go to this relay now we're gonna go because the power coming on this side of the circuit is coming from fuse 29 so fuse 29 feeds power to fuse 25 over here on this smart junction box under the steering wheel. So let's go under the hood and check fuse 29. All right, so we are here under the hood and this is the under the hood fuse box. So I'm gonna open it and we're gonna test fuse 29. So this box here has numbers on it and fuse 29 is this fuse right over here. I don't know if you can tell, but it says 29 right there. So fuse 29 should be this fuse right over here. So now it's one of those big fuses. It's a uh, 80 amp fuse. Now we're gonna test it. Let's make sure this fuse actually, let me yank it out of here first. Here's the fuse. I'm gonna remove this plastic cover so we can test both sides of the fuse. All right, so I removed the cover of this fuse so now I'm gonna put it back in place so we can test it. So let's reinstall this fuse. Now, I hear some type of noise in the car. I have my test light connected to battery negative. So if I touch both sides of this fuse, the test light should light. So there's power here, there's power here. So since we have power on both sides of this fuse, because remember with the, when we were looking at the wiring diagram, this fuse feeds power to the fuse that supplies power to the relay that supplies power to fuse 15. So basically, since this fuse is good, if that relay that supplies power to fuse 15 is also good with the key on, we should have power at fuse 15. So now let's go inside the car and test fuse 15. All right, so we are back here at the fuse box inside the car. With the key on, if that relay is good, we should have power at fuse 15. So fuse 15 is this fuse right over here. So there's no power here, there's no power here. Okay, so no power here. No power here. So let's check fuse 13. Fuse 13 is right over here. So there's still no power at fuse 13 and fuse 15. Okay, so now we're gonna test that one relay. Let's go find out where that relay lives and test it. So let's bring up the uh, power distribution wiring diagram again. All right guys, so we are back here at the power distribution wiring diagram. So we checked fuse 29 under the hood. So this fuse right over here, this 80 amp fuse. So this fuse sends power down this leg of the circuit. Power gets here, it gets split. It comes down, it goes in both directions. So it comes down 
to fuse 7, fuse 10, and it comes down here to D, which is a connection, and D goes down to the accessory delay relay, okay? And the accessory delay relay is on the last page. So now we're going to scroll down. And here it is. So right over here. D from smart junction box and accessory delay relay. So basically, and then here, fuse 25, which is a 30 amp fuse. Okay, so at this point we need to check fuse 25, a 30 amp fuse. So let's check fuse 25. If fuse 25 is good, then we're gonna find this relay, this delay accessory delay relay, and test it. Okay, and this is I believe in the smart junction box. So the the fuse box under the steering wheel. So let's go under the steering wheel and test fuse 25. All right, so we are back here in the vehicle. And as I'm looking at the fuse numbers here on this cover, we don't have 25. So it goes basically from F1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9 through 12, 13 to 17, and then 18 through 24. And this is a 30 amp fuse, so I believe it's C1. Because when I look at the uh, the fuse box here, all of these fuses, there is no 30 amp fuse. The only 30 amp fuse that I'm seeing is this big mama right here. So I believe this is our fuse. So I'm gonna remove it so we can test it. So let's just yank it out. All right. So here's the big fuse, and I don't know if you can tell, it says 30 amp on it. And this is the only 30 amp fuse that we have on this box. So let's test this fuse and make sure it's good. If it's not good, we will replace it with a new fuse. All right guys, we are here at the workbench. We're gonna test this 30 amp fuse. This is the fuse that we removed from the smart junction box under the steering wheel. So basically what we need to do is we have to make sure that these two points are connected together, okay? We have to make sure that there is no breakage between these two points here inside the fuse. So we're going to do that by using our multimeter in the uh, ohm scale. So I got my multimeter in the ohm scale. Once I touch these two leads together, we should see numbers on the uh, multimeter screen. So I'm going to touch these two leads together. And as you can see, we have a, our leads are working, so our multimeter is working. So now we're going to test these two points here. So hopefully I can show you what I'm doing. So one, so this side is touching this side of the uh, fuse, and then this side, and let's look at the multimeter. So our fuse is good. There's continuity in the fuse, so the fuse is not open. Since this fuse is good, what do you think our issue is? Well, now we're gonna go after the delay, uh, whatever accessory delay relay. So let's go back inside the car and reinstall this fuse, and then we're gonna find where that relay lives so we can test it. So let's go in the car. So basically what we did, we tested this fuse right here. Fuse 25, so this fuse is good. Now we're gonna test this relay. This accessory delay relay now. Because this relay is what feeds power to fuse 15, which is dead on both ends. Fuse 15 doesn't have power. So let's find this relay and test it. Accessory delay relay. Okay, actually let me click on this page and hopefully it's gonna tell us where this relay leaves. Well, it's not telling us. Yeah, because this relay is what sends power 
to this fuse. Let's find where this relay lives. And apparently the relay, this accessory delay relay, is in the smart junction box. Let's go under the under the steering wheel again to see if we can find this relay on the smart junction box. So let's go back in the car. Alright, so let's reinstall this fuse. So that fuse is reinstalled. So now we need to find that accessory delay relay. I don't see a relay around here. I'll, I'll look around. Maybe there's a relay up there. I will look up there and see if there's a relay. And if I find something, and then I'll bring you guys back up. We gotta look somewhere around this smart junction box because apparently that relay is on this box. So I will look for it and then bring you guys back up. All right guys, here is what I did off camera. I removed this cover here that covers this steering column. Remember we are looking for the accessory delay relay and on the wiring diagram it says that the accessory delay relay is on the smart junction box. So I removed this cover to get a view of the top of the smart junction box because I thought the relay is on top of it, but I looked around, I couldn't find it. I even removed the uh, battery junction box. As you can see, there are no relays in front of it, and there are no relays in the back, okay? So here's the back of, and it says, uh, scrap if dropped. So if you drop this box, you can't use it anymore. Now, I wonder if the, uh, accessory delay relay is inside this smart junction box because I can't see any relays around it and on the wiring diagram it says that that relay is on this smart junction box so I'm gonna take this smart junction box to the bench and then we're gonna open it up it has some tabs here on the sides we're gonna push these tabs in and open it to see if we have a relay inside this if we have one or two relays inside this smart junction box. My service information is not really telling me where that relay is because that's what we're gonna test next. And if the smart, uh, if the uh, accessory delay relay is inside the smart junction box, if it's defective, we're gonna have to replace the smart junction box. So let's take this to the bench and open it to check, uh, to see if the, uh, smart, if the uh, accessory delay relay is inside this smart junction box. So let's take this smart junction box to the workbench. All right guys, once again, just a quick peek of what we are doing. We remove the smart junction box out and the relay we're about to test is this relay right here. And I believe this relay is inside the smart junction box. So we checked fuse 25, this fuse is good. So now we're gonna test the relay. I don't know if this relay is even testable. I don't know if we can test it. If we can get access to this relay and test it because what's happening here is that we don't have power on fuse 15. Either side of fuse 15 uh, don't have power. And fuse 13 also. So this fuse over here, fuse 13, fuse 13 doesn't have power. And fuse 13 is on this smart junction box. There's no power on either side. And this fuse actually gets power from the ignition switch. And we tested it with the engine running. There was no power. So I'm wondering if we have a bad smart junction box. Okay, so let's open up that smart junction box and see if we can get access to this relay and test it. If we cannot get access to the relay, uh, I'm going to kind of leave this video right here we'll bring it back tomorrow i will call the ford dealership to see if this uh just to be sure that this accessory delay relay is inside the uh, smart junction box if that's the case we're gonna have to get the whole uh, smart junction box but in the meantime let's bring our smart junction box to the uh, bench and open it to see if there's some relays in it so now let's go to the bench all right, so I removed the cover of this smart junction box. And remember guys, we're doing all of this just to see if that accessory delay relay lives inside this smart junction box. And you have to be careful uh, taking this smart junction box apart because you don't wanna break anything and you don't wanna drop it. 
if you drop it, it's basically scrap after that. So I already, un I already undid all these tabs. So let's get the cover out of the way. And as you can see, this is the low current board and this is the accessory uh, accessory delay really. I'm just assuming I'm not 100% sure but we will get the information from the dealer tomorrow and be sure about it now I don't see any other I don't see any other signs of damage here besides these little I don't know if you can see these colors here I feel like these things are kind of peeling off I don't know if this is good or bad but anyways Let's put this smart junction box back together and let's install it back in the vehicle. All right, so that's back on. Let's put this fuse back on. All right, so we're gonna go back inside the car and reinstall this smart junction box. And uh, before we install it, we're gonna make sure that the smart junction box is receiving all its powers and ground. If all the powers and grounds are there, we will get a new smart junction box. I'm sure once we get a new smart junction box, this vehicle will be fixed. So now let's go back to the car. All right, guys. So I reinstalled the uh, smart junction box. As you can see, it's back there. I checked the power supply wires and the uh, ground supply wires to the smart junction box. The smart junction box is receiving power and ground. So the powers and grounds are good. Now, there's one trick I wanted to do before I'm 100% sure that the issue is the smart junction box. This is what I did. I, uh, I'm sending power from one of the wires here on the master switch of the driver uh, door. Okay, so the master switch on the driver door. I am using this fused jumper wire. This is a uh, 7.5 amp fuse. So in case there is a short in the circuit, as I'm doing this, only the fuse is going to get blown. Okay, the fuse is going to blow if there is a short in the circuit. That way we don't burn or damage any wires. Now let's go to the wiring diagram so I can show you what I'm doing. So basically I'm back feeding power through the switch and back to the uh, smart junction box. Remember before fuse 15 wasn't getting power. So what I'm doing right now, I'm bypassing the accessory uh, delay relay. I'm gonna take you to the wiring diagram so I can show you what I did, but let's double check, let's check fuse 15 now. So fuse 15 is this fuse right here, the third fuse. Remember this fuse didn't have power before. But now as we check it, as you can see, Fuse 15 now has power. Okay. So Fuse 15 has power here now. And it's having power because I'm, I'm back feeding power through the switch. Let's go to the wiring diagram so I can show you what I'm doing. All right, so here is the wiring diagram. I'm sorry for the glare, guys. So here is the accessory delay relay. Um, almost positive that the accessory delay relay is the relay we saw inside the uh, smart junction box so what I did was because this relay has to close to feed power to fuse 15 which is a 10 amp so now what I did was I came to this master window adjuster switch so this master switch I'm feeding power here so basically power is flowing from this wire into the smart junction box and then it's going to come to this fuse and it's going to flow through the fuse and it's going to come to the radio and then from the radio it's going to go to the passenger side door lock switch and then the rear auxiliary function selector switch so basically we're sending power through here you know when everything works fine this relay is what closes and sends power to all these circuits here and remember, none of these circuits are working. So now we're just going back, we're back feeding, we're basically feeding power through here. Now, if, if we are able to turn the radio on and roll the windows up and down this way, 
this will tell me that this is just one other test that I'm doing to be 100% sure that the issue is definitely the smart junction box. I'm sorry for the glare, guys. So, right here. And if you do this, you have to make sure that you are using a, a, uh, a fused jumper wire because you just don't want to jump this straight to power. If you do that, if there's a shorted component, if something is shorted here, you can do a lot of damage. So make sure you are using a fused jumper wire. So I'm sending power through the master switch and then it's going, it's going through the uh, smart junction box through the fuse. Now with the fuse, I mean with power on this side of the switch, the fuse is now powered. All right, so now let's go back inside the car and turn on the radio. So if we are able to turn on the radio and roll the windows up and down, that will tell us that the circuit from this point, from the switch, from the master switch, through the uh, junction box is good. And these other circuits here are good as well. So there's no shorts to ground because if they were a short, the, f the fuse that I put here on the master switch was gonna blow. So let's go test that. And if the radio comes on, that will tell me that the issue is 100% the smart junction box. So let's go inside the car and test that. All right guys, so here is my jumper wire that are connected to the master switch. So this is basically back feeding power to the smart junction box. So with the key on, now our radio should be able to come on. And as you can see, the radio is on. So now let's try the window. All right guys, so I'm gonna roll the window up and down. I'm going to, I'm gonna try to get my hand and the window in the shot, so watch. The window's going up and down now. Windows up. Windows down. Windows up. Right there. So now, I'm gonna roll it all the way up. Now, if I remove this wire, I won't be able to, I won't be able to roll the window up again. So watch. Now with this wire removed, I can roll the window up and down. Now let's reconnect this wire to this back probing tool here. Okay, so we are reconnected. So now our window should be able to roll down. See that? So there we go, guys. I feel at this point, I feel comfortable calling for a defective smart junction box. So the smart junction box is defective. Now, one more test. Fuse 10, uh, I think it was fuse 15. Fuse 15 is this fuse over here. Okay, let me show you guys. We just looked at these fuses. So fuse 15 is this fuse right here, okay? So the second column of fuses, so basically the the one in the center. So the third one from the bottom. So fuse 15. So now let's go down to the fuse box. So right over here. So fuse 15 should be this fuse right here. And as you can see now, there's power here. And then there's power over here. Okay, now, right now there's power. The key is still on. Now we're gonna disconnect this wire that we put over here on the switch. I'm gonna disconnect it. Once we get this wire disconnected, there won't be any power at fuse 15. So now let's get this disconnected and we're gonna lose power at fuse 15. So watch this. So fuse 15, is this fuse right over here and as you can see right now there's no power here no power yeah there's no power so now I'm gonna reconnect this jumper wire here the jumper wire is reconnected now we should have
power at fuse 15 watch right there there's now power at fuse 15 okay there's now power all right guys so that's all at this point i feel comfortable calling for a smart junction box so all right so let's go back to the computer here all right so basically what we did was we were just bypassing this accessory uh, delay relay okay so we sent power from the switch we used the jumper wire from the switch here you know uh, we sent power on this wire this pink wire with the light green tracer so power goes down this circuit and then it comes over here splits comes to the fuse remember when we were sending power from the from the uh, switch we were now getting power at the fuse which told me that the circuit from this point all the way through this fuse here is good so we have good circuit here the, the circuit here is now broken it's good and then down here to the radio because once we jump here now the radio uh, works so we were able to turn on the radio and we were also able to roll the windows up and down and the issue is this relay right here this accessory delay relay and I'm sure it's the relay that we saw inside the smart junction box so at this point i feel comfortable calling for a defective smart junction box we're gonna get another smart junction box and then we'll see what happens so that's just a, another uh another test that i wanted to do just to be i guess 200 percent sure okay always check and double check yourself be before you uh, make a call especially a call like this one because I'm sure this smart junction box is not gonna be cheap I will get all the pricing and everything from the dealer tomorrow we'll order it install it and after that I'm sure this vehicle will be back uh, will be back to the customer so I'm gonna leave it right over here for today I will bring you guys back up once I get the uh, smart junction box. Alright guys, so we are back here on this Ford Freestyle. I did get a new uh, smart junction box from the dealership. And here is the part number. Let me show you the part number here. So here is the part number for the smart junction box. And here is the old one. So I just got it out. So now let's get the new one out of the box. And install it and one thing I did off camera uh, I don't know if I said that last time because this is about uh, five days later I did do all the testing about five days ago and I determined that this smart junction box is defective I checked all powers and grounds to the smart junction box and all the powers and grounds checked out okay so i feel comfortable replacing this smart junction box so let's get the uh new one out of the box let me see if i can do this one-handed all right so here is the new one you don't want to drop it because this is scrap after dropped all right so there is the old one the old one is right there and here's the new one okay so we're gonna install this one and then after we install this we will try our radio we're gonna try the uh, windows remember the windows were not working the radio wasn't working and the interior lights were not working either okay so from what I heard is this box it's not just a regular fuse box it has a module inside it and this module has to be reprogrammed okay so I'm gonna connect it first and then we will try to operate the windows and the radio and if everything doesn't work we're gonna have to have it programmed I will have it programmed after that and then I'll bring you guys back up but we're gonna try first to see if I can get the windows to work and the radios to work then I'm just gonna end this video here 
and then I'll have my friend come out here and program this for me. Okay, so I'm going to install this uh, smart junction box here. It's pretty straightforward. It has three nuts. There are two up here and one on the bottom and then we have to connect these electrical connectors. The connectors are color coded. As you can see, there's the black one, the gray one and the brown one. Okay, so I'm going to install this smart junction box and then I'll bring you guys back up once I get this smart junction box installed. Alright guys, so I got the smart junction box installed. So we have the new smart junction box on the vehicle right now. And here is a stack of uh, wiring diagrams that I had to go through because one thing I also did off camera, I mean, the smart junction box is under the steering column and there's no, there isn't enough room around it. So I couldn't really show you everything I was doing. So just so you know, or just take my word for it, uh, I had to check all the powers and grounds to the smart junction box. So I checked all the powers and grounds. I made sure I didn't miss anything before I made a huge call of replacing the uh, smart junction box or having the customer to buy the whole smart junction box because it's a pretty expensive item. So I checked all the powers and grounds, you know, every wire checked out okay, all the inputs and outputs from the smart junction box checked out okay, there was no short somewhere in any of the circuits. So after checking all of that, I was comfortable replacing the smart junction box. And as you can see, let me show you down here. I got everything back together. It's a little dark there. So I got all the panels and everything back together. So now with the new junction box being installed, we should be able to turn on the radio and roll the windows down. Remember, the customer brought the vehicle to us because the windows were pretty much stuck up and the radio wasn't working anymore. And we did all the tests. We determined that the smart junction box was defective. The one item that was defective on the smart junction box was the accessory delay relay. And the accessory delay relay was not switching to send power to uh, fuse 15, I believe. It was fuse 15 that powers the, the radio, the power windows, and the uh, sunroof. So that relay wasn't latching. It was receiving the control, but it wasn't latching. So something went down. I tried to see and check all the circuits. I try, I'm, I would like to, to know what happened. Uh, the windows are all going up and down uh, nicely because I actually checked it first before I turned on the camera. So uh, I didn't program the, uh, the, the, fu the, the fuse box, uh, the smart junction box. I didn't program it, but I'm going to check everything first. And if anything seems funny or if anything doesn't work in terms of like uh, locking it with the fob or anything like that, I will have to get this smart junction box programmed because the uh, interior fuse box is part of the uh, body control module. So that's Lyra smart junction box, I believe, is also the body control module. I didn't really look it up, but I think it's it's part of the body control module. But I will try it first. If, re if it requires reprogramming, then I'll have to reprogram it. So now let's turn the key on so we can try to turn on the radio first. Now with this new smart junction box in place, the radio should come on. So I'm gonna try to turn on the radio. And as you can see, the radio is working. So now I'm gonna to try to roll the window down. Remember the windows were stuck up. So right there, the window is rolling down. I'm gonna roll it up. So as you can see, the driver side window is now rolling down. So let's try the passenger side. So I'm gonna roll the passenger side window now, right there. I'm gonna roll it up now. So yeah, and the battery is starting to get weak. So right there guys, as you can see, we made the right call. Now the windows are working. The radio is also working. So I'm sure we're gonna have a happy customer. So this is a fix guys. I'm gonna leave it right over here. This was a pretty long video. I had to go back and forth. I had to check and double check myself and be sure that the call I made was the right call. And sure enough, we did make the right call and everything is working. So I'm gonna leave it right over here. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. 
If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do give it a thumb down, you gotta tell me why, so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.